Well, howdy. My name's Vax, and welcome to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. Like the last game, the sequel to this Trials and Tribulations, and Ghost Trick fan of Detective, this was all made by Capcom, written by Shu Takumi. He's probably one of my favorite writers because of how insane he gets with some of the bullshit. This might be one of the weaker entries in the Ace Attorney series of games, but I still enjoy a lot of it. I don't hold much malice against the one case a lot of people have a lot of trouble with, or problems with, I should say. Uh, it does stretch on for a little bit longer than it should, in my opinion, but that is for later and not now. So, without further ado, let's just get right into the game. What a nightmare. And I bet it was this ringtone that caused it. I really shouldn't be dozing off right before a trial starts anyway. Huh? Looks like they hung up. Ah, oh, good. I finally found it. Talk about a close call. I hate to do this to you, but... It's nothing personal, Mr. Attorney. What has Phoenix got himself into this time? Ouch. My head. It's throbbing. And why does it feel so foggy in here? Good morning. Ah, uh, uh, good morning. Maya, you sure do look different. Did you do something with your hair? What's wrong? You don't look well. People are at their best first thing in the morning. Where's that fighting spirit? Sorry, but can you please turn the cheeriness down? My head sort of hurts. Roger that. Um, am I in trouble or something? Huh? Trouble? Wait, nev never mind, you're a police one, woman, right? I thought maybe I had done something wrong. What are you talking about? I'm the one in trouble. What? I'm placing my life in your hands today, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Life in my hands? You promised me. You said you would prove that I was not guilty. Uh, not guilty? Just when I thought all hope was lost, when all the other lawyers had laughed, at me, laughed me off. Leave it to me, you said. You, the one and only Phoenix Wright, came to save the day. And just like that, I was moved to tears, sir. I'll never forget what you're doing for me. Ever. What is this girl babbling about? Actually, I really love to watch court proceedings, and I always root for you to win. When I'm off duty, I like to come here and... What's wrong? You've been acting really strange and you keep staring at me. You're making me kind of nervous, sir. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm afraid to ask, but here goes. So, this might sound bad, but... Uh, who are you? What? Mr. Wright, how can you say that? How can you do this to the fragile heart of a girl about to go on trial? You're absolutely horrible. No, I mean... I didn't mean it like that. 
Is this how a defense attorney treats his client, sir? I can't believe this. No, it's just... Well, I think you have the wrong person. I'm... Yes, I'm... I'm... Who am I? Why am I drawing a blank? Oh no, Phoenix has amnesia! Well, pack it in, everybody. Phoenix has lost his mind. The trial will begin shortly. Will the defendant and her lawyer please proceed to the courtroom immediately? The trial's about to start. I'm counting on you in there, okay? But how can I do anything? I don't know jack shit about you or the case. Huh, I guess I must have amnesia. Let's see, what can I piece together? Hmm. From our conversation, I can safely say that I'm probably a defense attorney. And that girl, I said I'd prove her not guilty. I can't believe I made such an irresponsible promise. Ah, someone please. Tell me this is just a bad dream. Why do I get the feeling this is the one dream I won't be waking up from? Oh, Judge, it's so good to see you again. It's been, what, a few months at least? Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Oh, gasp. Oh, pain. It's such... It's not that good to see you. Your glasses are still retarded. You need to change them out for something better. More stylish. What is it, Mr. Wright? Um, uh, are you talking to me? Do you see any other defense attorneys here? I guess not. Now then, are you ready? Uh, no, not really. No, I'm always ready. I'm Phoenix Wright. I guess I should say yes for now. Are you ready, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. Wait a sec. If her life is in my hands, I should really do the responsible thing. Actually... You see, Your Honor, my memory is kind of... The court will not hear the defense's excuses. Because the defendant is a member of the police, this case is under great scrutiny. Therefore, we must make this trial fair but swift. I believe I have told you this before, and I hope you're not telling me you've forgotten. Actually, I did. Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Yes, Your Honor. As I'm sure you're well aware, the defendant is accused of killing her lover. What's worse, her lover was a fellow police officer. A policeman? You did what to a policeman? It wasn't me. And besides, Dustin and I, we weren't lovers like that. In any case, the prosecution will prove that the guilty party is none other than the defendant. Very well. Mr. Payne, please call your first witness. <laughs> It's been a while, Mr. Wright. Let's see what you've learned since last time. I don't know what I learned, I have amnesia. But if you're talking about the person playing me, then I remember everything. I remember cross-examining a bird, so you stand no chance against me. I won't show you any mercy this time, rookie. Why do you call me rookie? I've, I'm, I've got a perfect track record. Unlike you, which I've defeated you, like once. Okay, and who are you again? Please bring Detective Dick Gumshoe to the stand. Here we go. Don't let me down, Mr. Wright. Nowhere to hide. I'm so dead. Witness, please state your name and occupation. There he is. There's the big lug. Oh, you haven't changed at all, Gumshoe. That bandage on your cheek still hasn't come off. I don't think it ever will. My name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. You don't look very well, detective. Well, sir, the defendant, she works under me, so, you know. You work under that detective? Yes, sir, and while I was a trainee, he was always watching out for me, sir. He's such a wonderful guy, sir. I'll never forget what he's done for me. Okay, calm down. I believe you. 
Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Yes, sir. It happened at the park near headquarters, Expose Park. The victim was one of the local cops, Dustin Prince. He was pushed down from the benches on the upper path, sir. Dustin Prince. Do you get that uh, name pun right there? Dusting Prince. Prince as in fingerprints. Yeah, it's great. Goddamn name puns, you will be the death of me. The landing beat up his body but bad and snapped his neck. The details are listed in the report that was distributed yesterday. Ah, yes. The autopsy report, correct? Why do I not remember getting a copy? I see everything is, is, is in order here. Even the estimated time of death is unusually well documented. The victim's watch stopped from the impact of the landing, sir. The results of the autopsy report confirmed the time of death. If I may, Your Honor. The prosecution would like to submit this photograph. Very well. The court accept it, accepts it into evidence. I'm slowly working my way back into their voices. Just gotta give me a minute. Now then, I recall that at yesterday's preliminary hearing, a very important piece of evidence was brought to our attention. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, I guess. Mr. Wright, is your head on right today? There was a very crucial piece of evidence found under the victim's body. Um, was there? Have you lost your mind? Well, actually... Um, it's just nerves. Give me a second. What? How can you talk like such an amateur? I thought you were a pro, sir. Alright, sir. I'll help you through this. At a time like this, you maybe you ought to take a glance at the court record. I don't need to do shit. Don't tell me what to do, Maggie. Court record. Yep. Info about evidence and people involved with this case are all listed there, sir. You can look at the court record by touching the court record button. The court record button. You really know what you're doing what you're talking about, huh? It's too bad I'm a cop, right? Just think I could totally be legal aid instead. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Court is in session. Save your chit chat for later. Sorry, Your Honor. Well, I guess I'd better check the court record and see what I can find. Fine. God. The attorney's badge. Cell phone. Dustin's autopsy report. Glasses. And crime photo number one. Glasses found under the victim's body. Pieces of nearsighted lenses were found nearby. Time of death, 9-6 at 6.28 p.m. Calls broken neck. Body was also covered in bruises. I found this in my pocket, but I don't remember what it means or how it got there. It's my all-important badge, and shows that I am a defense attorney. The victim fell from the walking path above. That's a big drop, man. I don't think he could have died from that. I think he's just being a baby. What was it again? The court record button? Alright, Mr. Wright. Let's see if your notes are in order. What was the piece of evidence found under the victim's body? Glasses. That's simple, Your Honor. A broken pair of glasses. That's right. The victim grabbed in criminal's glasses as he was being shoved, sir. And held on to them as he fell. Hey, why are you giving, giving me the evil eye? Those glasses you're wearing. Uh, yes, this is my spare pair. But these glasses they found at the scene of the crime are not mine, I swear, sir. You sure about that? Look, it was a coincidence that on, the se on that same day I accidentally stepped on mine. A coincidence, she says. <laughs> Your Honor, I have further evidence to present. Oh, you have more? And this evidence is very decisive. Very well. Let's hear from our witness about this evidence. Oh, good old testimony. There's something... No. Oh, there's something even more incriminating than the glasses under the victim's body, sir. During his date, the victim was pushed from the bench area, but he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. 
I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the, fe the defendant's name, Maggie, sir. With this piece of evidence in the classes, it's hard to say she's not the culprit. This is a picture of writing, Your Honor. Of the writing, Your Honor. Why? This is... Yes, I can see the name is clearly written here. But wait. You don't only have the evidence in the court record. Profiles. Something is amiss here. Can you spot the difference? I hope you did. Because that is a very big clue. The prosecution would like to submit, submit this picture. Understood. The court accepts it into evidence. As if the glasses alone didn't make you look suspicious. The victim even wrote your name clear as day in the ground. But, but, but I already told you, those glasses aren't mine. And how do you explain his dying message? It's a conspiracy. I'm not guilty, sir. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Cross-examine? This is it. I'm counting on you. Sure, but what am I supposed to do? What? This isn't like you at all. Normally, this is the part where you get in the witnesses' faces. Get in their faces and do what? I guess there's no way around it. Okay, I'm going to lend you a hand. The prosecution's witness... The witnesses are all high things from the court. Ah. Which means they lie from time to time. Lie? But isn't that detective your superior? Well, even if they don't mean to lie, sometimes people just remember things wrong. Huh, like that detective. He does sort of look like a scatterbrain. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's bad for us, sir. That's why when you question witnesses, you have to find and expo expose their lies. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Talk about trial by fire. Here goes nothing. As long as I can expose the lies, we should be alright. Indeed we should. And don't worry, you got the world's best attorney by your side. So here's something a little bit new from uh, last time. On the last game, we had exclamation marks that uh, signified our health. If you lost all of your exclamation marks, then you fail. This time, we have an actual health bar that if you mess up, you'll take damage. It's, you know, kind of better than the last one, and leads to some pretty interesting uh, stipulations that, gets put, that get put on you. But, uh, first... Let's, uh... Hmm. Let's get this underway, shall we? So usually what you want to do is press everything. But... I don't think you need to press everything on this one. But he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. I don't like saying it, but it was, cl it was clearly the defendant's name, Maggie, sir. Well, you know, that's all well and good, Gumshoe, but there's a contradiction here. What is it? What? What's come over me? Without thinking, I just blurted out objection, and I yelled it at the top of my lungs. Finger out, outstretched, ready to take on my opponent. What a rush. Detective Gumshoe. Y you talking to me, pal? Please state the defendant's name for me. What are you trying to prove with this futile exercise, Mr. Wright? You'll see. This is a very crucial line of questioning. Actually, Mr. Payne, you can answer. The defendant's name, if you please. Where is this ridiculous question coming from? The defendant's name, uh, is Maggie Bird. I think someone needs to check the court record. What? It says right here that it's Maggie Bird. Ah! It looks like the bird caught the, nat the cat napping. What's going on here? I have no idea either, sir. 
as you can see. The victim did indeed leave a name, Maggie. However, the defendant's name is actually spelled Maggie. This is a blatant contradiction of facts. Oh. How about that? I hadn't even noticed. Oh, well, then you're a terrible boss, Gumshoe. What the heck? But, 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 but maybe the victim didn't know how to spell her name correctly. May I remind you that it was you who said the defendant is accused of killing her lover. If they were truly lovers, it would be impossible for him to not know her no to have not known her name. No. This is very true. Mr. Payne. Uh, yes, Your Honor? Are you absolutely certain that the defendant and the victim, Dustin Prince, were in fact lovers? Yes, I'm quite certain, Your Honor. They were a well-known couple in the p police force. Detective Gumshoe, please testify for the court the relationship between the victim and the defendant. Yes, sir. Officer Prince and Officer Bird had been going out for about half a year. It sounded like they were even talking about marriage. After half a year? Jesus. That was way too soon. The day of the incident just happened to be the victim's birthday, sir. Maggie. I mean, Officer Bird had gotten Officer Prince a present. It was something she had gotten over two months ago. I should know, because she came to me to ask what she should get for him. Oh. Oh. Those two sound like they were close. Nevertheless, tragedy struck. Hmm. Yes, I see. You may cross-examine the witness, Mr. Wright. All right. What do we have here? Over two months ago. Yep, she's a very considerate woman, pal. So, what was this birthday present? She got him a glove. A single glove? Why would she only give him one? Um, actually, Your Honor, the glove in question is a baseball glove. Oh, I see. A baseball glove. I remember baseball back in its heyday. I was a pitcher. A lot of people thought I would be a catcher. Officer Prince was a huge baseball fan. The baseball glove, hmm? Well, let's press further. Why not? There ain't nothing, ha no harm in it. Just now, I believe you said the present was something she had gotten over two months ago. Yeah. Are you saying she went out and bought the glove over two months ago? Nah, nothing like that, pal. Then what is it like? She ordered it. It was custom made. Custom made. The glove was custom made. Yep, that's what I said. Hmm, so the glove was custom made. Yes, everyone knows the glove was custom made. Your Honor, I really don't see how this glove is related to this case. Yes, it would seem that there is little relevance. What do you think, Mr. Wright? Do you think this glove is really relevant to this case? Actually, if, of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? I wouldn't bring it up if it wasn't. I don't know where this will lead me, but... Of course it is relevant. That glove is the key to this whole case. Yes, bluffing to the max. Now this is the Mr. Right I know. I'm so happy you're back, sir. I was wondering how long it'd take. This is great. Uh, pressing people. It feels like I've done this before. As if I used to do this to squeeze information from even the most tight-lipped people. Very well, if you are that convinced, then let's hear some more about this matter. Actually, I brought the glove with me today. Well, lucky for us, Mr. Gumshoe. And... Why didn't you say so earlier? Hurry and show the glove to this court. Well, I didn't think it had, had anything to do with this case. Anyway, this is it, sir. That's... 
That's a terrible looking baseball glove. It looks like a bunch of bananas. What would you buy that? It's, uh, rather yellow, isn't it? Officer Prince really liked the color yellow. And that's why you had, it special, had to special order it. Yep, that's right. That and one other reason. I think this court has heard enough. It is clear that the victim and the defendant were involved with each other. Yes, that is correct, Your Honor. Now, if that is true, it brings up an, up an important question. Was the name Maggie really written by the victim? I see your point, Your Honor. Detective Gumshoe, please tell the court a little more about the name on the ground. Yes, sir. We first looked into the handwriting, sir. Unfortunately, we couldn't confirm that it was the victim's handwriting. Next, we checked the victim's pointer finger. We found that there was sand trapped under the victim's fingernail. There were also scratches on the skin that were caused by him writing on the ground. From this, we can confirm that the victim wrote this name with his right hand. Hmm. Yes, a perfectly logical conclusion. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Except there's one big contradiction in there, and I'm going to find out. Right. Hmm. Wait a minute. Right hand. Is that true? I can't really check that, can I? Not just yet. Let's go ahead and just press this. Right. No, wait. Detective Gumshoe, take a look at this. That's the glove, right? Could you tell the court what is special about this glove? What's special? Mm, I never really thought about it, but uh, it's really yellow, and that's about it. Yes, it's really yellow, but that is only one of its qualities. Huh? There's another reason why it's special. And what would that be? It's very simple. This glove is made for a left-handed person. Ah, oh, God. You're right. Because usually you have your... If you're right-handed, you have your... Have the glove in your left hand. Left-handed. Why, you're absolutely right. This glove is made to be worn on the right hand. That is why it had to be custom-made. I've never seen a bright yellow left-hander's glove for sale, have you? Have you? Well, um, no. So, detective, which hand did the victim use to write the name with again? That's easy. Look, it's obvious. From this picture, that was... that was his... Wait a sec. Don't forget that the victim was left-handed. This is... that is... I mean, I... Object! Overruled! Mr. Wright, I would like to know what your line of reasoning proves. Well, uh, it obviously proves that he couldn't have written that message. Or if he did, he would have used his left hand instead of his right hand. There is only one conclusion that can be drawn. A left-handed person could not have written a message with his right hand. Therefore, the person who wrote the name Maggie could not have been the victim. Order! When you think about it that way, then yes. It is not possible that this name was written by the victim himself. Then that means Maggie is. No! It's not possible! Mr. Payne! Yes, Your Honor. The evidence that the prosecution has presented has failed to prove the defendant's guilt. In fact, I believe you have proven her to be innocent. No! All right. You did it, Mr. Wright. Oh, I feel like I can breathe again. 
It seems that we have reached the conclusion. You did a fine job once again, Mr. Wright. Me, Your Honor? Ah, oh, well, thank you, sir. See, you got complimented by the judge again. You're really good. And that's why you can't give up being a lawyer, sir. Are you joking? I'm more than ready to retire. I will now announce my verdict. This court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird. Mr. Payne, you will be held in contempt of court if you don't shut up. No, not yet. I mean, please give me a few more minutes, Your Honor. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Payne? The prosecution is not finished yet. What do you mean? We would like to call our next witness to the stand. What? And what did this witness witness? The moment the victim was pushed to his death. What's more, he saw the very face of the culprit. What the heck? Order! Order in the court! I believe a recess is in order. Afterward, we will hear from this new witness. I had a feeling that was a bit too easy. Hmm. I need more information. I'll have to see what I can find out during this recess. I can't let my guard down. It's only going to get tougher from here. Court is adjourned for recess.